power 1500 in 270 with a Bushnell banner scope. I don't even know if it's really a Bushnell banner to be honest. I got it off a dodgy person really cheap. And uh, as much as it says Bushnell there, the banner has um, flip up covers and stuff like that. But, uh, what else was there? I've oh, just got mill dots and stuff too in the in the crosshairs. And I don't think the banner had crosshairs. Anyway, um, I've got a couple of bits and pieces I've chucked on it. Nothing out of the ordinary or anything but the sling. The, like a cheap piece ammo holder, which is awesome for hunting because you sort of, you load up the five in the internal magazine of the gun and take another eight in these and that's pretty much all you need really. You usually bring a few home. You can sort of fire off a few pot shots at trees. But um, but yeah, just a gun. Loud. Nice big, big holes and things. Uh, smooth action. Um, stainless barrel and um, that synthetic hogue over my old stock's nice and grippy. Um, the wood ones seem to slip a little bit, especially if you're hiking around and you get a little bit of moisture on your hands, a bit of sweat or something, and then you grab your gun and it's a bit slippery. This thing's nice and sticky. Uh, I don't know what to say about it. They're awesome. They come fully floated. Um, you can actually see I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But with a synthetic stock it's flexible enough you can actually push it up to touch the barrel so you get to see how much uh, space it has I guess. Um, the only bugger about these straps is I've got a bipod I use. I don't use the bipod too often on this though, I usually use it on the smaller guns. But um, I have to take the strap off to put the bipod on it. So it's not a quality Harris bipod. Um, I don't know what to say about this. It really only just shot this in the other day. It's only had 60 rounds, I'd reckon, put through it. I put about 15 through the other day, sliding it in, which was a bit of a pain in the bum. Uh, sometimes things don't go quite as planned, I guess. Um, yeah, this has a three-stage safety, so it's it's off. I can't do this one-handed. In the middle is on can't open the bolt and if the bolt was open, oh hang on, I can, if the bolt was open I can't close it. I think that was the third. To be honest I never use the safety, it's, it's the bolt out if you need to be safe. Bolt in if you don't, you know, if you get a point and shoot at something, you put the bolt in, cock it, and fire, and if you need it to be safe you take the bolt out, I wouldn't really trust safety's full stop. So that's my excuse for not really knowing how my safety works on this. But I do remember it's a three stage thing and you can either lock the trigger locks the bolt open or closed and then it has a full lock so a little release at the front. The only burn about this magazine this magazine setup is it just doesn't look cool having a little box hanging off the bottom. But it is handy, it feeds easy. I don't have any ammo on me to show you but it just feeds in through the top here. Stacks in one on another so you can actually fit five in the box and then pop one in the in the chamber so you actually get six rounds I guess to walk with. Plus wherever I chuck in here. Cool gun, not real heavy, don't know what it weighs. All the factory info's out there, and probably someone else on YouTube's done a review on it that knows more about the weights and all that sort of gear. But it's a cool gun, I like it. Cheap. Or cheaper. Um, how it makes the exact same, it's the exact same barrel and action and stuff on this, it's the Va uh, Weatherby Vanguard, which my old man has. A page to touch more for, it's the same bloody thing. Really, I would have got a Vanguard too because you know, loyalty to the same gun shop and the same same gear and it's basically the same gun. But I just didn't like the, um, I can't remember the brand of stock they used, but their stock just wasn't as comfortable in my hands. So yeah, went with the Howler and saved a couple of bucks. I wouldn't be saving a couple of bucks on the scope again, this is just an interim scope. The only advice I could ever give anyone buying a gun is don't get cheap shit scopes. They're fine for a couple of shots, they're fine for a couple of days. I was for a couple of months, but eventually you find it's out. You have a look through someone else's scope and it's crystal clear as opposed to yours, which you always thought was pretty clear. Um, it sort of dulls out in the dark pretty quick. And it's a shade. All that sort of gear. But you live with it. I mean, it's got... I don't know if you can see it through this camera, but on this one being a cheap, we're guessing it's not actually a bush knife. I don't know if you can actually see the crosshairs on this. Fine across.
for says in the middle. Don't uh, don't disappear as much as they look like they would in the dark. So you can still sort of see them and it's not too bad. But yeah. I don't know what to say about it. Going hunting, uh, what's today is Friday, I'm going hunting this Thursday, uh, this Sunday, sorry, up in Marawa. Fair hike from where I live. It's about eight hours drive, but some pigs and goats up there. I'll get some photos, I'll be taking this with me. It'll be its first bloodletting. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll get some shots of it. And, because this is only a crappy little camera that's videoing, it's not really worth filming. Take it forward and <laughs> do these off the cuff. Um, and if I eventually, and I will, I plan on getting myself a better camera. I'll set it up at the range and get the targets. It looks cool when you shoot it at night, bigger calibers and stuff like that. Heaps of flash off the barrel looks kind of cool. I'm not trying to hide from anyone and snipe them off, so. In the dark that looks pretty good. So I'll get a couple of shots of that too. Alright, it's the Howard 1500 in 1270.